Welcome to a quick overview of Binary Stream Software's subscription billing suite for Dynamics 365 for operations. Typically, to manage recurring billing, users are resorting to recurring batches. Unless each periodic invoice is identical, though, this requires a lot of manual intervention and manipulation. Alternatively, you could use Excel spreadsheets, manage the billings there, and then key or import them back in each period. Again, very cumbersome. What about deferrals? Out of the box, there's no easy way to manage deferrals in Dynamics 365. Many users have described the lengths that they go to to build out massive Excel spreadsheets to track and manage their deferrals and prepaids, and then manually journal entry them back into the ERP each period. With Binary Stream Software's subscription billing suite, you can easily manage your customers' billings and the associated revenues and, of course, expenses as well. Binary Stream Software's subscription billing suite actually consists of a number of modules. We call the first one ARC-B, or Advanced Recurring Contract Billing. Then there is ARED, or Advanced Revenue and Expense Deferrals, and MIRA, or Multi-Element Revenue Allocation. These are fully integrated AX or Dynamics 365 for operations modules. They allow us to do line level billing and deferrals and to allocate the revenue based on the standalone selling price of each of those items. Let's look at them in a little more detail. Advanced recurring contract billing allows us to do either scheduled or milestone billing. Scheduled billing would be like billing in January, February, March, or billing each quarter, or billing each year. Whereas milestone billing is more like, say, 10% up front, 15% upon a certain milestone being met. Maybe it's some installation or user acceptance testing, something like that. You don't know when those are going to happen, but there are milestones built into the contract. In any event, you get line level control of the billing parameters. We can do metered, consumption, or usage-based billing as well as standard billing as well. And we have a true tiered or cumulative pricing module. The Advanced Revenue Expense Deferrals allows us to recognize revenue or expenses either straight line or based on milestones or events as well. Again, we're doing recognition at the line level. So on one contract, we may have an annual item that's deferred over 12 months. We may have a milestone item that's recognized only as certain milestones are met. There's no need to manually allocate templates or profiles or, or do any manual intervention, unless of course you need to. And we don't post to future periods. The multi-element revenue allocation allows you to set and define a standalone selling price or a fair value for each of the performance obligations on your contract. You can then create one or more multi-element allocation IDs per invoice or contract to simply say these performance obligations go together and then revenue is reallocated based upon that relationship. Let's have a look. Let's start by going to a billing schedule under the Advanced Recurring Contract Billing. Here we're going to build out first the header. We're going to add the customer information. We're going to come over and put in our billing frequency. We can do one-time, daily, monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, or annual billing. Let's set this one to annual. We're going to put in either the start date and end date, or the start date and then the number of periods to be billed. We can also add the number of lines to add per renewal. So if this contract is annual with a one-year renewal, we simply set it to one. If we were doing a 12-month monthly contract that had an automatic 12-month renewal, we would set it to monthly, and the lines to add for renewal would be 12, and we would add an additional 12 months to the billing schedule. Next, let's add some line items. Suppose we have a contract with a customer to sell them hardware, subscription for software, service contract, which we'll bill annually, and then some professional services. Now notice how we can manipulate each line to correspond to the correct billing parameters of the items. Notice that the hardware, it's not deferred, of course, and we're going to bill this one time. The SaaS software, we are going to bill this monthly. Because it's billed monthly, we do not have to defer this either. Now this one is also set up as usage-based, which means that in behind, we can import in the number of licenses actually reported by the user each period. 
the service contract, notice that this one is billed annually. Because it's billed annually, it has to be deferred. And if we click on the advanced deferrals link, this is the tie-in to the advanced revenue and expense deferrals. These parameters are inherited from the ARED setup. It knows that yes, this is a deferred item. I have my deferral account. This is the balance sheet liability account. I have my recognition account. This is the account that will be used when those dollars flow from the balance sheet to the P&L. And I can set up my deferral based on templates. I can set this up for a number of years. Right now it's set up for two years, but I'm selling this annually. I'm going to change this to a one-year deferral. And when I click OK, it will save those parameters behind the item. Next, I've got my professional services. Now again, these are a standard item. I'm going to bill them one time, and I'm going to defer, defer these just a little differently. I don't know when I'm going to use them. If I click on the advanced deferrals, again, it says it is deferred. It gives me my deferral and my recognition account, but now instead of a straight line recognition, it is an event based, and I'm going to do this based on percentage of completion. So as I recognize each period and say I'm 10%, 30%, 50%, 80% done, and so on, it will calculate the correct amount to recognize each period. As a point of clarification, I'm showing all of these modules working together, but if a Dynamics 365 user requires subscription or recurring billing, but has no need to do deferrals, or requires revenue or expense deferrals, but has no need to start from a recurring billing contract, these modules, while they are designed to work together, also work as standalone modules inside of Dynamics 365. Let's clarify the usage-based billing. This works one of two methods. When we import in the usage, we can actually import either an actual meter reading, in which case we will store the current reading and the previous reading and calculate the consumption, or it can be more like a zero-based billing, where you simply start at zero each month, and as it's consumed, we simply count and track and then import the amount consumed and then start at zero again next month. This could apply to things like minutes on a cell phone, minutes on an IVR, number of professional service hours, uh, in this case, the number of software licenses billed. The system is designed to handle either one, and it will store either the readings or the amount consumed and then show in the schedule the billable quantity. In order to import that usage, we simply go to the data entities, the data management section, and we tell it to import the ARCB billing usage. Again, we will import either the meter reading or the amount consumed. In the event that the user has a front-end system such as CRM or Salesforce, Dynamics 365 has these data entities that can be used for importing the data, either in Excel format or XML format. Binary Stream has provided what is needed to bring in the ARCB schedule headers, the ARCB schedule lines, which would add new lines to an existing header, or using the composite, we can bring in an entire schedule. We build the header, then we add the lines to it, and we can also update the ARCB parameters. Now, once all the details are entered on the billing contract, whether we key them in or whether we import them, the user simply runs the periodic invoices. You do this by selecting Create Sales Orders under Periodic Tasks. There, we simply tell it what date we want to create invoices for. So let's say we're running our invoices for the month of July. We have a couple options. Do we want to send a single invoice to a customer? In other words, consolidate if the customer has multiple schedules with us, or do we want each schedule to create a unique invoice? If we're billing the same item multiple times on multiple lines, do we want to consolidate that to a single line? And what date do we want on the actual invoice? So I'm going to bill as of July 1st for everything that needs to be invoiced up to and including July 31st. And when I click Select, it will simply go and find all the items that need to be invoiced. And there's an item ready to go. Let's go look at the Advanced Revenue and Expense Deferrals for a moment. Notice under Deferral Defaults in the Setup area, the different document types that we can create deferrals for inside of Dynamics 365. We can create invoices for sales orders, for purchasing documents, general journals, free text invoices, invoice journals, and project accounting fees. 
we can also set up parameters for the deferred revenue. For example, I can say a specific item or groups of items or all items will use a certain recognition or a certain deferral account. I can do the same thing with consumption if I'm tracking cost of goods sold and I want to defer that. I can also attach a specific template again to a group of items or I can select individual templates for different items. For example, I have certain items here like the vouchers, like the registration, like the exam where I'm using the event-based templates whereas other items I'm using various straight line templates. If a user needs to use the event-based deferrals templates, notice that there's different ways that we can create these. We can do event-based templates based on variable amounts, a certain amount per milestone. We can do it based on equal amounts. It will simply take the full amount, divide it equally amongst the number of milestones that have been created. We can do it based on a percentage or based on a percentage of completion. As an example, Look at this hardware. The customer told us that when they deliver the hardware, they want to recognize 50% of the revenue. When their provisioning is done, turning it on, making it work, 30%. And then the training, the remaining 20%. To recognize the periodic revenue or expense deferrals, again, under the advanced revenue expense deferrals, under periodic tasks, simply select recognition processing. Here, we're going to tell the system whether we want to create, or if we've made a mistake, we may want to reverse some journal entries. Let's create, and we're going to tell it that we want to recognize everything again as of July 31st. We can change our schedule here, change the description. And I'm going to give it a date of the 31st. When I click select, it will go out and it will find everything that needs to be recognized as of that date. So here I see I have an item that needs to be recognized as of July 31st. These are just some of the features of Binary Stream Subscription Billing Suite. We also have some reports, such as the monthly recurring revenue report, so important in the subscription billing business, and revenue waterfall and deferral balance reports that show you what's going to happen with those dollar amounts, those deferrals that are sitting on your balance sheet and how they will flow from the balance sheet to the P&L. We're updating our binary stream portal to allow Dynamics 365 for operations customers to see their billing contracts, to update their contact information and view or pay any outstanding AR or sales order documents. We'll be adding revenue allocations soon, allowing you to split one item across several deferral or recognition accounts, some of which might be recognized immediately upon posting, some of which might be deferred. We're also adding an advanced pricing option. Things like committed amounts, minimum and maximum quantities, minimum and maximum dollar amounts, free quantities, true tiered pricing. And we'll be adding the milestone-based billing module. This module allows you to bill not based on calendar frequencies, but based on project milestones, such as 10% upon contract signing, 30% on installation, 50% upon user acceptance testing, and 10% upon final sign-off. And finally, we're improving our support through the Multi-Element Revenue Allocation Module, or MIRA, for support of both ASC 606 and IFRS 15 revenue from contracts with customers. For more information, please visit our website, www.binarystream.com, or have your value-added reseller contact us on your behalf. Thank you.